Hi, my name is Maria Druska and it's my little vlog Keep Up To Dark where I'm sharing the most important news that have happened over the day. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more about the life during the war. And we start with NATO news. NATO foreign ministers ended two days of meetings in Bucharest on Wednesday with meetings focused on the long-term challenges posed by China as well as on support for partners uh, facing Russian pressure. As I wrote yesterday at my Twitter, Hungary banned Ukraine from joining the full formal session. But Ukrainian Minister of Foreign Affairs Dmitro Kuleba was still attending the dinner after the formal part. And here I would like to say hello to Latvia. Latvian Foreign Minister Edgar Rinkevich in an interview uh, on the sidelines of the NATO Foreign Ministers meeting in Bucharest said that Ukraine should be free to strike military sites inside Russia as it uh, fans off attacks on its critical infrastructure. We should allow Ukrainians to use weapons to target missile sites or airfields from where those operations are being launched. Allies should not fear escalation, he said. Meanwhile, the Minister of Defense of Belarus stated that allegedly NATO is preparing for military operations of an offensive nature in the eastern directions and the West is preparing nationalist formations in Ukraine that can be used to seize power in Belarus by force. Well, we have heard a lot of different statements from uh, Belarus before. I guess this one will also be put in the list of top 10 ridiculous statements from the potatoes landing. Uh, missile strikes from the Russian Federation can be expected at any time. Russia does not abandon its intention to launch a new missile um, attack, a massive missile attack on Ukraine. The representative of the GUR, military intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, said. He was asked what caused the pause between massive Russian missile strikes on Ukraine. Is Russia waiting for something? Quote, firstly, additional reconnaissance is carried out on those objects that were struck. Secondly, this is a classic approach. The areas and targets to be struck are studied. Thirdly, missiles are being prepared for combat use. It takes time and taking into consideration that uh, reserves in the Russian Federation is decreasing, uh, all missiles are used and uh, they cannot produce uh, uh, that fast and even Soviet ones are used, so they need to be uh, to get serviced. Russian Federation is um, able to produce certain missiles, like raised missiles and weapons to use against Ukraine. At the same time, according to him, the occupiers are negotiating the supply of weapons and ammunition with other countries. In particular, about ammunition for MLRS of the type Smerch and Uragan because the production of the Russian Federation has not yet become massive. So there is a certain shortage in Russia. According to the GUR, Russia held negotiation with Iran regarding the uh, replenishment of the Russian arsenal of ballistic missiles. There are draft agreements between Russia and Iran but we have not recorded the delivery of such weapons so far, he added. And the last one. An explosion at the Ukrainian embassy in Madrid happened after one of the boxes was 
open. There was a small explosion device, reports Europa Press. The parcel was intended for the ambassador of Ukraine. Spanish authorities consider the explosion and the Ukrainian embassy as a terrorist attack. That's all for now. Thank you for watching Kiev After Dark. Ukraine is moving to its victory and Slava Ukraine!